I'll just go ahead and and uh, get started by introducing. Um, so Mary Tarzinski here is one of our valued mentors. Um, she, she does a marketing basics webinar for our startups almost every batch, so we're super grateful for that. Um, thank you all for signing in and we look forward to you being engaged during this session. Um, joining us also is um, Gabby, who's our food community manager. So all of you food startups, you guys already know her, but if you don't know me, if you're from retail, media, and or food, um, my name's Alexandra. I run our program for materials and sustainability. Um, and yeah, with that, I will go ahead and pass it off to Mary to give herself an intro and get started. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can use the Q&A. Um, I would ask that you guys put all questions in the Q&A box because then myself, Mary, and Gabby can all see it and we can manage that for you. If you put it in the chat, I'll also keep a lookout for that and probably just kindly ask you to put it in the Q&A. If you feel like your question is not being answered properly and you wanna go off mute, you all you have to do is use the raise your hand function. That will allow me to call on you so that you can unmute yourself and talk. Mary did mention that her presentation is about 30 minutes, so there should also be um, room for open discussion. So definitely wanna encourage the engagement here. Um, so with that, Mary, would you like to get started? Absolutely. Okay. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, maybe if you're not in California. Um, I'm Mary Tarczynski. I have been uh, at the intersection of sales and marketing my entire career, uh, going back to the early 90s. Um, I have been a mentor with Plug and Play um, for almost four years now, and I do this session a couple times a year, usually in person. Um, a couple times I've done it online. This is the first time doing such a large group online. Um, so I hope that you will ask questions because um, I really sort of depend on that interaction. Uh, my background is in consumer packaged goods. So the examples that you're going to see today are uh, usually related to those kind of products um, or to B2B startups that help that industry. And um, there are a few of you I went through, I didn't get the retail batch and the ad batch, but I did get food and new materials and sustainability. And there are a few companies that I thought, oh, we'd probably be a good fit for that. So um, uh, if I don't hear from you, I might follow up afterward and just see how you guys are doing. And if you need, you know, maybe a little bit of free advice. And then also if you need any agency services, um, we do uh, offer pretty good value, I think, to our plug and play startups and are able to help people articulate their proposition um, if it's direct to consumer, certainly through e-com and things like that, or getting into retail, and then if it's a B2B service um, through some of the relationships that we have. Um, so with that, I'm going to jump in on my screen here, and I am going to be making this presentation available um, afterward if there's anything you want to look back at. Um, and I need to do slide share all done. There we go. Okay, so um, my agency name is Parabolic, uh, Ideas with Trajectory. We're really about the growth ideas um, that are kind of the sell-in. If you're selling into a retail partner or, uh, you know, an end, uh, a company that's going to use your product, and then, of course, the sell-through to the end, end consumer. Um, so I'll tell you just a little bit about my agency. Um, we're going to talk, you know, again, this is called Marketing Basics. Because um, not everyone's always starting. A lot of times, startups have great technology, but maybe don't know as much about the marketing side. So a little bit about about that. I'm going to give you an outline. Hopefully, this is early enough in your process that um, you're still kind of working on your deck um, for pitching with um, for deal flow and also for um, the investor pitch or kind of the showcase at the end of the of the batch. Um, so I'm going to give you some um, tips on kind of what to put in those decks. And then also um, marketing budgeting guidelines at the pre-seed, seed, and A rounds and some of, the, some of the things you should be thinking about. So I think that might be helpful as the takeaway from this. And you will get that. Um, you will get a copy of this so you kind of know, okay, have I done this yet? You know, um, or what, what should I be thinking about at each stage of my process? And then I have um, a list of some other uh, resources that are helpful for startups, um, most of them here in the Bay Area. PR and um, some other marketing companies. And then also um, I added, and I don't know if we'll get to it, but you can look through it on your own if we don't today, just some website examples of some work that we've done because it seems like a lot of times um, that is sort of where B2Bs are starting um, and you need help articulating your, prop your proposition, but also then succinctly articulating it on a website so people can um, learn about you easily. 
Um, so again, uh, for Parabolic, we're about those transformational business building ideas that resonate, um, you know, with your, uh, with the brand and with your retail partners if, if you're selling in a, a product or a technology to them. Um, and this is just some of our experience. Again, I said most of my experience is in, is in food and consumer packaged goods, um, a lot of natural brands. Um, and I know I was excited to see some of the food tech and um, sustainability on the list because I think that a lot of my clients might be interested in that. Um, and then also some of the larger big company experience um, from a little bit earlier in my career. Um, and we've worked with nearly every retailer and um, we have a pro we're always onboarding new new retailers in the past couple of years i've been working some in the cannabis space and learning to work with dispensaries and so it's about having a um, understanding retail go to market strategy and having a common process for um, calling on them and, and pitching your services to them you know knowing about their objectives of margin enhancement category growth att attracting new customers etc so lots of um, retail experience over the years but certainly adding new ones all the time and a lot more e-commerce these days as well. Um, so the, the role of marketing is really, I'm gonna have to hide the box here so I can read my whole slide. Um, creating and communicating offerings that have value for customers and um, creating demand. So marketing is a really important part of your company. Um, and hopefully when you founded your company, you, were, you, you saw a problem and that you were going to solve it, right? And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that um, but you need to make sure that you have a product that has a viable market, right? That there are people, there are others like you who see that opportunity and see that need. And where do you fit in the, in the landscape and how are you going to identify all the people, all the companies or people who might need your product and, and capture that growth? Um, so, so marketing, first and foremost, is sort of that strategic positioning how are you, who are you targeting? How are you gonna get that growth? How can you then plan and integrate, uh, execute integrated marketing programs? You know, that's really where, where a company like Parabolic comes in. And then how do you, of course, measure how those outcomes? It's so easy now with digital technology, way easier than when I started in my career and we did TV ads or, or print ads and things that had really long lead times and you really, never really knew which tactic was growing your business. Now with digital, you have so much data on, on exactly their messaging and the audiences that are working and you can continuously optimize. You can also place a lot um, smaller bets now than in the past in terms of marketing, which is of course fueled um, so many new brands and, and new um, technologies in the business. So, but like I mentioned, the, you have to be focused on the customer and how are you going to understand the customer? Again, you must have some kind of knowledge when you created your business of some kind of knowledge of the market there and um, probably some qualitative research. You know, you've talked to others in the industry, your former peers, et cetera. You understand that there's a need for this. If you can afford it, um, sometime in the process, you would want to do some quantitative research, right? You do an official pilot, you test it, you do a survey, um, you're gathering stats at least on the size of your market and understanding feasibility. Those are really important, um, you know, in building your business. You're also probably developing some kind of consumer persona and a customer journey. And I'll, I'll show you a customer persona and journey. I'll show you some examples of that. Uh, that's, that's really just painting a picture of your customer, whether you do it more based on sort of that qualitative data and your knowledge, or you're doing it based on research, or working with a research company to just kind of articulate who that customer is and understand the, the journey they go through to make a purchase decision, which of course for a B2B or something an expensive uh, ingredient or, or something in the supply chain is a lot longer and more touch points in the in the decision journey than you know a three dollar beverage or something like that so under understanding that and articulating that so you know who you're marketing to and the levers you're going to use to to talk to them and then finally uh, um in terms of customer requests and this happened at one of the uh one of the startups i worked at uh, ditto which which did um image recognition in social media we were getting a lot of requests from clients that sounded interesting but several of them turned off to be turned out to be sort of like little one-off things that were kind of taking us away from our bigger opportunity and our mission so in the early stages when you're talking to when you're talking to prospective customers especially big customers who want you to do this one customization thing 
make sure you understand, is this a one-off request or is this really gonna help me further my product for the larger market? And it's okay to do those one-off requests if they're paying for it, but if they're trying to get you to customize your product to meet their needs before they buy it and it's gonna take away from the larger market opportunity, you might wanna rethink that. Uh, so again, here is a customer persona example. This is for um, one of our food clients and you can see it's, you know, you can probably guess it's a, a more, um, you know, a pre, uh, upscale uh, food buyer, you know, millennial, foodie, et cetera, buying organic products, um, trying to bring out their own creativity and put a lot of love and joy into the food that they make. And um, that, that is the person that we had in mind, you know, when we built a marketing campaign for them. Um, and then we, um, that was the, a lot of those insights were given to us from the client, but then with additional research, you know, we sort of built out that, that trend, you know, food is art, taking pictures of your food. I'm sure you all know, you know, know people who do this, um, customizing your food, the, all the, the restaurants or chains, right? That where you start like a Chipotle, where you start with a bowl and add and all, all your favorites. And then of course the experiences, which none of us can do right now since we're all eating at home, but it's not that part about being together and enjoying that experience. So these were insights that again, went into the marketing campaign. So just a couple of examples of that really under painting that picture of the, of the customer before you develop the marketing. Um, a very different example here for a uh, quick, which was what a client I worked through, I met at Plug and Play. Um, this is for a quick, um, is a uh, alternative to the Amazon Dash button. Um, I don't, haven't heard too much from them lately, so I don't know how well they're doing, but it is a way to have, it's a IOT a technology to trigger an order. And this was a customer journey map for a office supply for toner so that the office manager, again, when we were all back in the office, um, could, re or anybody could uh, like realize the toner is out of, or the printer is out of toner and press the button and it would trigger an order. Um, so it just is a, a faster way to replenish, you know, the same their auto technology for soap dispensers. Let's say they're running out of soap or hand sanitizer. So this was the kind of the process that the, um, the, the journey for understanding how, um, you know, the, the journey for making this purchase decision to set up, to set up quick and to or, or, uh, order the product, set it up, you know, and then continue to, um, continuously order from the company and then even advocate it to other um, office managers, et cetera. So a very different customer journey from then what you might've seen for a consumer product when you're maybe making a decision in the store, when you're planning your meal, or looking at recipes, et cetera. Okay, so we've talked about the customer. Now let's talk about what problem do you solve? And every solution probably falls into one of these buckets you can pretty much make anything fall into one of these buckets. So does this solution, especially if it's a B2B, allow you to make, make more money? <laughs> um, you know, you're offering a technology that, or a product enhancement that is going to make it taste better or make it work better or make it better for the environment and therefore people are going to be more likely to buy it, right? That's in the make money category. The next category would be, hey, it's gonna save you money or save you time, which saves money. So it's more efficient right? It doesn't break down as much. It's more durable. Those are um, solutions that save, save money and save time. Um, or it could be a solution that reduces risk. You know, it's safer. It's um, less, it kills germs or it's less likely to, um, again, ha ha like explode or, or something, you know, have a problem. Those are, those are solutions that reduce risk. Um, and then the, a little bit more, um, harder to define, but does it increase your happiness? And maybe that's where, um, uh, you know, that is something that people are going to buy and it, they're just going to enjoy it more. It's gonna be a better experience. You know, ultimately that maybe helps them make more money, et cetera. So be sure you can, when you're talking about your product and you're figuring out your elevator pitch or, or you were pitching it to um, an investor, you can categorize, you know, which of these buckets your product falls into. Um, and speaking of eleva elevator pitch, I won't go through this, but make sure you work on that. Um, most of you, I did get, I get, did get the blurbs, as we call them, from, from Allie, and most of them I could kind of tell what the products were, but not all of them. So that's something during your experience at Plug and Play, um, please take the time to really nail that. Be sure you talk about who 
um, who you're solving a problem for, the problem you solve, who you are, what's special about, uh, what's special about you, and um, who you're solving it for. So this was a, uh, this is a few years old example, but this was the old, um, the old blurb for this. This is a little bit longer than a blurb, but maybe like a LinkedIn description for a client that we helped with. And then what we came up with for the new one, which was um, very, you know, much more of an emotional sell. Our minds can take trade spending off yours. And it's, you know, for more than 20 years, we do this, we generate, you know, who do we do it for? Leading and emerging brands, we generate 200% ROI. How do we do it? Talking about the team, who do we do it for? If you're someone who's spending more than 5 million in trade, you know, which might be a $50 million consumer goods company, you know, you need to do this. If not, you're leaving money on the table. Like you, we will help you save money, right? If you, if you work with us, contact us before your competitor does. So it was really a much stronger statement than um, maybe talking about their people or, um, you know, it's just, this is just much, it, it's much weaker. And this is much more about the, the problem that you're solving and who you're solving it for. And then an example of that was even just in their Twitter, their Twitter handle, um, customer marketing group hired to solve your, test, your toughest problems, trusted because we answer them. That doesn't tell you anything about who they do it for or what they exactly do. Um, and then the new one, you know, a dedicated team with extraordinary academic qualifications, analytical firepower and industry experience, fully focused on optimizing trade spend for CPG brands. So, you guys may not use the words trace spend and CPG brand, but people in the industry who do know exactly what that is. And that's a much tighter description than um, solving toughest problems. Um, and then also when you're, when you're explaining what you do, it's helpful to use visuals or a reference to something every day, put it, uh, refer it to something else in, in life, you know, the best thing since sliced bread or things like that. And so again, for CMG, this was a little bit more of evolved for them, but it's not the, ca it's not the camera, it's the human behind the lens. Um, and, and so their, their positioning evolved to where it's not just about the software that you buy for solving this problem, it's um, CMG team, team members can help optimize your trade spending regardless of which software you use. You know, it's not, it's not how fancy your camera is. It's like, who's taking the picture? So that was, and there's a video we made for them along those lines. And then this is another um, one of our clients that has mobile ads, that sells mobile ads in store. And it, um, the headline is, you know, mobile is the new end cap. This is a, a cartoonist who does marketing, marketing cartoons, because in, Again, earlier in my career, my days at Coca-Cola, we, we spent a lot of money on in-store displays. Now, when you're walking around the store, everyone's looking at their phone. Um, so now the money is shifting to uh, mobile ads, which is great because you get immediate feedback. You know, how many people clicked on that ad? You know, you only send the ads to the stores where you have product availability. So it's just showing that, um, you know, in this picture, you immediately get it. Oh, yeah, no one's looking at displays anymore. They're walking around the store looking at their phone. So I highly encourage visuals. And of course, that's what, that's what we do as an agency. Um, okay, so now the deck, the deck outline. Um, here are the things, this is my winning formula to a, um, for a pitch deck. And then we'll do, we'll do the sales deck and then we'll do the investor deck. Are there any questions? I saw some things blinking. Do we, do I, I know I go pretty fast. Should I pause and take any questions? Allie, are you? So that that was actually me. I was just asking them if they if they had any questions, put them in the chat. So okay, okay, great. Don't worry, I'll jump in if there are any. Okay. All right. Um. So we've already talked about this a little bit. Your deck outline should be the problem that needs to be solved. And and every uh, first startup, every every customer is want going to want to know um, you know a little bit about your founder's story. How did this problem come to your attention? You know, a lot of in my world, a lot of food uh, brands or natural beauty brands were were solved because people who had who had a skin condition um, or their child had a skin condition or they had a diet condition or whatever, like couldn't find a product. And they, so they created their own, um, you know, so be sure to, you, you want to tell that in, as part of your story, what is the problem and why you, you know, how, why are you the right one to solve this problem? And then a very easy to understand articulation of your solution, which I kind of showed you even for CMG, something kind of boring as <laughs> trade fund consulting, um, make sure that you can explain it in a way that, that people can understand. I call it the grandma test, you know, can your grandmother understand it? 
why yours? Why are you, you know, you need to put some kind of frame of reference. Like, why is your solution better than others on the market? What, what else are people doing? Now, sometimes you don't have a direct competitor, which is, which is fine in, in the startup world, but they're, they're doing it some other way. So are they doing it manually now, or they're stitching together different things and yours is going to, um, you know, there, there's some, you need to put it in some form of reference about what is the, what is the behavior change that you're going to replace. Um, how it works, you know, what's included. Don't get too detailed here. I've seen a lot of startups, technology startups in their basic pitch deck have a lot of technical detail like right up front and you will lose people if they are not bought into the concept. So save that optional advanced methodology page for like the appendix of your deck so that you're really getting into the problem and how you solve it and why you and you know how to get started and then if you have of course you're going to have some technical context particularly for a large large scale sale you know have that that information is important but don't get hung up in that before you've given them the overall picture so that is my winning outline for a pitch deck you know it can be it should be 10 pages or less um, and then here was one i just wanted to show you the importance of visuals so here was when we did for shopper bridge and um, they, you know, kind of spent a, a lot of words on the page, a lot of, a lot of time talking about their capabilities, right? Um, and when we re redid it for them, we spent a lot of time talking about, um, again, this is the mobile, mobile advertising that people are on their phone, um, they're spending, you know, they're checking their phone 52 times a day. I've also heard thousands of times a day, you know, they're spending three hours on their phone, they're looking at their phone in store. Um, you know, how can we service them? How do you use it? Some great case studies. Um, and then um, exam examples of clients that I've worked with. Did I talk about, hold on. The market, I, I skipped over this line, market validation. As you start to gain traction, um, in client testimonials, case studies, awards, and press are gonna be a very important part of your story. So make sure you have a section for that and add to it as you gain more traction. Um, and then I just wanted to show you another example of the importance of visuals. Um, this was one of our cannabis clients and we did, this is uh, an iPad type of deck that we did for education. And they came to us with just some basic information and we really had to work hard to not only tell the story, but tell it in an ownable visual style that would come over well in a house party situation on a, someone's home TV or iPad, you know, to kind of explain how um, THC and, and CBD work together. And, um, you know the the form. You know how how cannabis works together, and um, also the forms you can um, ingest it in, and how to, how it works with the endocannabinoid system. Um, okay, so you have your customer pitch deck, and now we're going to add the pages that an investor might want to look at. And usually, and I have an example of this. There, that some vision of the competitive landscape. So I know. People will say, but I'm the only one, there's nobody like me, but there's something similar to you. At Coca-Cola, we used to say share of stomach. Okay, maybe you're the only, you know, you're the first coconut water, but if they're not drinking coconut water, what were they drinking before that? Were they drinking regular water? Were they drinking Gatorade or something? There's something in that landscape that you're now a substitute for. Um, so make sure you put yourself in frame of reference of that. Uh, size of addressable market. Again, that, that's where that research is really important, even if it's secondary. If you are substituting for something, what is, what is the size of that substitute market? Um, they're investors are going to want to know your leadership backgrounds. Hopefully, you all have that already in your deck. You know, your education, your industry experience, uh, particularly any management experience, patents, awards, etc. Make that visual. You know, use logos, especially of your advisors. You know, put the logos of their companies so that people can just get a quick glance and, and understand and feel confident in your team. You're going to want to know, of course, your go-to-market strategy. Um, I do a lot of marketing plans for people. At, you know, if if marketing is going to be X amount of the um, of the money that you're going after. They want to want to see how you're planning to spend that. As you start to spend, you know, they're going to want to know your cost per acquisition and how you're going to optimize that, et cetera, you know, finding your best audiences. And then of course, your, your pricing model, your expense and revenue forecast. I'm not the expert, expert on the financials, but just saying that that's going to be an important part of your pitch deck, showing when you're profitable, et cetera. 
and this is just an example of that quad map. So this was our client Omnium. And of course you always, you know, kind of do these so they, your brand looks the best, but here was, here we're, you figure out what the, what the values are. This was not research-based, this was qualitative, but um, this was ranking their kind of field of competition on technical ability and CPG experience. So there were um, some other clients that had maybe more um, CPG experience, um, but they felt like they had the best in terms of both tech ability and experience. Okay, the next section is just, again, what you want to do, uh, the, sort of the order maybe to spend on marketing or the things you want to think about from a marketing standpoint. Most of you guys are probably in the pre-seed range, um, you know, less than a million in funding, bootstrapped, maybe there's some that are a little bit more than that, but, um, you know, these are the things you need and, and they don't cost very much. Or in some cases you may be able to do it all in house or, or use an intern or your cousin or something like that. Um, so we've already talked about the succinct articulation of the problem and solution. You should come out of, of plug and play with that nailed. Um, your name, most of you have that, your logo, you have that, but also encourage you to have basic brand standards. Um, and that's, we do that for clients. Um, there's a little bit of money that needs to go in that, but you could also do it on your own or, or work with a junior graphic designer, but, you know, get your tagline down, work with a copywriter on that, you know, spend some time on that. Make sure you have a nice looking deck for your, you know, you can get this done by the time you present a plug and play at the end um, to have uh, nice colors and font and a nice PowerPoint deck template. So everything is standardized and looks, looks premium and looks nice and is consistent. Um, and then you probably need some kind of basic website. And I did see a variety when I was looking at everyone's site. Um, but again, you want that to kind of match your, your basic um, brand standards and colors so people start to recognize your brand. And then if there are keywords in your technology, you want to make sure that you're um, SEO optimized so people are searching for solutions or even searching for your company name that they'll easily find you. And of course, that there's a contact form that will feed into your CRM when you start to send emails out to prospective investors, prospective customers, et cetera. Um, and then you're at this point, you're doing warm prospecting for, for customer feedback and proof of concept pilot, taking advantage of the deal flows and the introductions you get through the plug and play network. Um, all of this can be done in, you know, the low single digit thousands of dollars um, or, or even nothing if you, if you have some resources in house, but if you have to spend a little bit of money, this is all well worth it to get your foundation in place. Um, and here's an example for a, um, this was a company that existed, but we helped them rebrand. So we did a competitive analysis to see where they fit in the marketplace. It's a premium company and you know, they make uh, tchotchkes, basically logo items. Um, we found some ownable territory for them. We helped them write their positioning. If you can dream it, we can make it happen. Um, you know, they're really offering to help, help companies brand their marketing services company by helping them, you know, find the, the items that they want to brand to help promote their company. We went through an updated logo um, process uh, for them, logo development, and because this was their old logo, this, um, they were still pink, but it was just a little bit more dated and came up with the, the butterfly symbol because it was about the, if we dream it, um, you can achieve it. We, if you dream it, we can achieve it. So it was a more elevated, more premium positioning for them. Um, client testimonials are really important. This was, uh, again, for CMG, I use them for a lot of the examples here, but these are all recognized brands in the industry, uh, you know, C-suite, CEO, or our similar level quotes who helped tell the story of this client um, in different ways. We, we purposely put this set of quotes together um, and use them on their website and in their deck and in their social media to really um, show the different aspects of why this company was important. You know, it gives you one less thing to worry about. They're a valuable partner. Um, they help me go toe to toe with the big boys. You know, they're um, consistently helping me. You know, this is the guy, this is where we got that, that line in, in our, in our um, new write up, which was unless you are a competitor, I encourage you to go, I encourage you to consider CMG, you know, and he worked with them at three different companies. So when you are doing your pilot pro pro projects and your proof of concept installations, be sure to get quotes if the company will allow it, which is not always easy, because let, let your customers tell your story for you. 
really important. Okay, now we are in the seed round. So what are the things you've got some money now you've gotten that first round, you know, you're going to spend a little bit on marketing. What are the things that you do next. Um, and this is where PR is usually important. Um, and there are um, lots of different um, small service providers who can help you with this. Um, and I, I list one in the back of the deck, but um, usually you can find someone who has relevant industry experience. Um, your uh, investors may um, also be able to help you with PR. So you definitely should ask them. You need to have an angle. It's not enough anymore just to get, you can't really get press coverage by just getting funding. But if you have a truly unique approach, if you have a David and Goliath story, which I'll show you about with quick, um, where you're a little guy taking on a big guy. Um, if you have a celebrity investor, that's usually kind of noteworthy or probably the one that is tried and true, if it's allowed, is that recognizable customer success story um, I was really lucky at Ditto, we had a craft, we won a pitch competition with craft and they, um, and we had, there was a Wall Street Journal article and they endorsed us. So that was huge, you know, right out the gate. Um, so that's why those, those competitions and things are important because they can get you some press and notoriety. Um, you, at this point, you want to start content marketing for your social channels and to create the SEO. Um, so you want to have a blog or something on your site where you have content and that way the, the web crawlers can, who are looking, you know, people looking for those keywords, your, your site is going to come up. If you haven't already set up a, a CRM, a little newsletter system, a HubSpot or um, even MailChimp for free, um, you know, a place to store your content. So you contacts and you can uh, email them regularly when you have news. You don't want to spam them, but when you have something important to talk about, um, you're going to be continuing to warm prospect for your pilot customers and product optimization. You're getting, make sure you're getting feedback on, on every sale or every installation. At this point, you're probably hiring a salesperson. If you have not done that already, someone who has industry contacts, um, CEO can't do everything. Founder can't do everything. Um, you're going to want to have someone who's selling for you. And you want to be going to attend the, to industry events. You may not be able to exhibit at them yet or sponsor anything, but you certainly want to be out there networking um, and getting your name out there and talking to people and continuing to learn. Um, and, and then, of course, you want to put your lead customer testimonials on your website. Um, this, at this point, you know, the marketing here is more work versus paid things. Um, and so you need someone to do that, whether they're in-house or a small agency or freelancer helping you, but it's kind of content creation, coordination, follow-up and things like that. So it's not really paid and based investments, but it's content creation and networking. So that's my recommendations at the seed range. Um, and then here's an example I'd mentioned quick earlier. Um, we were really fortunate. We did the um, graphics for that and the kind of the marketing, the website was already done, but we did the infographics of how, how it works and um, coordinated uh, PR. And we were really lucky that a reporter went to an, they're based in um, Tel Aviv and went to an event there and, and covered them and was able to cover it was just a $3 million round, but because it was taking on the Amazon dash button, it was that David and Goliath story. So we got some coverage and then some other um, article. Um, I think TechCrunch was first, but Wall Street Journal picked it up. Um, and then we were also doing social media with, I mean, who doesn't love a beer button? You know, press the button and get beer. So there's some, there were some kind of fun things that um, allowed us to get some coverage in social as well. Um, and then if you're on the food side, you might be doing a launch kit at this phase. So you're going to have a little bit of money at production. Um, but this was an example for a, an existing company made in nature that made it organic um, dried fruit snacks, but then they went into vegetables and were competing to compete with salty snacks um, with a organic dried nuts and but dried vegetables and nuts and seeds in a little ball, a hard little chewy ball <laughs> that um, kind of gave you that satiation of a, salty, of a salty snack with the crunch and everything and the um, savory taste, different flavors, um, but was better for you. Um, so we did, um, they had the packaging done, but we did the whole veg out power up concept, you know, about natural energy and launch kits for retail and a customized launch kit for Kroger, and, I mean, for Publix and showing them um, how it would grow their sales and then even a really an expensive trade show booth, but it had the activity of picking the vegetables and learning more about them. <laughs> so just a way to really get the brand out there on a small budget. Okay, one, one more category here. 
I'm just like talking nonstop. Um, <laughs> which is um, now you've got your A round, you know, in the single digit millions maybe for a small company. <laughs> and at this point, you probably have a dedicated marketing person in house or certainly a regular agency. And you're going to expand your content. You're probably doing more social media. You might be boosting your social media or doing LinkedIn ads, depending on who you're selling to. Continued PR, customer success stories, maybe entering partnerships. And this is where I would say you would get more active in industry events, depending on your industry. Um, so you might be doing some trade ad advertising, having booths at trade shows, et cetera. Um, so you're, you're still, you're spending money very tar in very targeted ways where your um, customers are likely to be. And certainly at this point, you maybe want to start spending on AdWords and retargeting people who've come to your sites and you're doing some copy testing and optimization. So examples of that, this was when I was at Ditto, we did um, a few different videos. Of course, we did the little explainer video. Um, we had a product demo. We had a customer testimonial um, video. We were getting a lot of press because I had data to tell stories. So it was a really easy PR sell. We had entered contests and won awards. So really leveraging all of that, we ended up growing to like a $16,000, um, a 16,000 member CRM in a pretty short amount of time just by doing, putting a lot of content out there. Um, and then here's a trade ad ex example. This was, um, gosh, maybe a decade ago. So there was a lot of print, um, but it was for Diamond um, Foods who had come out with Emerald and they started as the nuts and they um, started as just Diamond Nuts Walnut Co-op and then came out with um, Emerald Snack Nuts and then bought Pot Secret and bought Kettle. They were trying to compete with uh, Frito, um, you know, Pepsi Frito and said, you know, we, we're the innovators, right? So Diamond, we use their name, Diamond Rings, and came up with this ad campaign of Diamond Rings, Diamond Innovation Deliver, Shine Like Only a Diamond Can, Great Relationships Start with a Diamond. So using their product name to, to reinforce their B2B proposition, hey, take, put our products on the shelf too, because even though we're not as well known as the number one brand, we're really pushing the envelope with higher quality products and really pushing innovation. So it's successful for them as a retail strategy, in addition to just the consumer um, pull for their various product lines. Um, and then one more example here in terms of the optimization. This is a more recent example for Lindsay Olives, where um, keto, with the rise of keto um, and just healthier snacking, plant-based in general, um, they were spending a lot of, uh, we were putting a lot of content, blog posts, dieting, um, trends and things like that and investing in Google both in, in cert and organic SEO and that was you can see that um, the search visits were increasing over the time we were doing that the total visits were increasing and the SEO percent of visits kept getting higher so those are you know free visits based on search um, and then we also did AdWords and our um, as we went about the campaign, the click rates kept getting higher on our, um, on our ads and the cost per click kept getting lower. So that's the stuff you wanna relentlessly measure and optimize to see what's working for you. Um, so <laughs> those are all of the kinds of things that you should be thinking about from a marketing standpoint. It's the planning, the positioning, the graphic, brand standard, website, SEO, copywriting, content creation, engagement planning, social media strategy, whether you're B2B or, or B2C, B2B has some implications for that too. Media planning, when you get into higher level budgets, the press relations, analyst relations, event planning, if you're um, you know, gonna have a booth or some kind of event. Um, we didn't talk too much about it, but email prospecting, there's a lot you can do with, with LinkedIn and with List um, to you know, generate um, leads. And then um, as you start doing that, you're putting it into a CRM and you're having some marketing automation, um, you know, based on behaviors people take on your site and if they download and things like that. So it's usually not something you can expect one junior marketing person to do. Um, you know, it, it, I encourage you to have, as you start to expand, you know, have a trusted advisor, a senior level or senior label agency partner helping you with uh, um, the planning. And then usually um, there can be a, a junior person who's kind of helping with the coordination in-house and um, 
you know, running down the assets or, or making sure, you know, whoever needs to sign off on things um, happens and things like that. We're running the day-to-day -day social media. Um, you know, it's usually, usually the best way to get started. Um, so that's um, a little bit about Parabolic and all, all the things that we do. Um, again, my contact information will be in here. And um, I also in here are, this has been, um, uh, give, I've, I've developed this list over the, uh, a little bit of doing this presentation and hearing about um, uh, other consultancies that will help the plug and play startup community. So i um, happy to add to this list if anyone's got suggestions, um, that's something you could share now or, or um, get them to Allie and we can kind of add to this because um, I think the, um, ask your target market for research. I think that came from one of the plug and play startups who's been using that for quick, quick and dirty market research or 99 designs for logos. Not necessarily like the logo you want to live with forever, but maybe for a quick, a quick way of getting started. And these are a couple of um, partners that I've worked with that help with marketing um, for small companies and the articulation of your proposition. Um, Rebecca did the PR for quick and Igor, um, did some prospecting for Z, uh, for Ditto um, and, and does both digital ad management and email prospecting for B2B. And then the other thing I put in here, we won't go through it now, but um, I put some examples of websites um, so you can kind of see uh, some of the work that we've done. This one, it, they're in uh, sort of uh, from high to low end. Um, the reason this one was expensive is that they really needed a lot of copywriting and positioning. So we had to do a lot of that work before we could even build the site. Um, you know, some of them, the, it's been just more about visuals, right, and, and appetite appeal. Um, and then the, here's a startup where we did everything. We did the positioning and did all the, the graphics. A simple site, they're just getting started. Um, here's one that is um, still about to launch, but um, needed positioning and then just getting started on an e-com product. Um, this is uh, one that had the product but needed a brand new site. Um, so we got this one launched really quickly. Um, earlier this month, right before, of course, or earlier last month, right before um, COVID-19 shut down. Um, and then here's a few more. These are B2Bs. Um, so I've, I've given you a lot of examples of customer marketing group. I think I used a little bit of examples here. So these are less expensive, um, you know, simple sites that you could check out for ideas um, on how to um, position your products. And you'll see they all have a, a nice visual style so that that's consistent. We did um, decks for most of these guys too. I think. Oh, and then some landing pages, campaign landing pages. So hopefully there were some questions. Um, I know we've got about 15 minutes left. Yeah, we do have some in the Q&A box. So if, if you're ready, Mary, I'll go, I'll go through them. Sure. Okay, great. So um, first they were asking if you could share an example of like a good sales deck, like what would be an example of a good sales deck and if you had like a, an, a uh, something that you could share? Yes. Um, uh, do we want B2B or B2C? Um, or I could do both. Why don't we do that? Maybe let's do both because I know that I have both startups in here. Okay. Um, yes, I have. So I guess what you would do is, uh, they're also asking if you would share this deck. Um, yes, yeah, I'm sending. Yeah, I'm gonna send this to you. So um, okay, so maybe then you could share with me like an example of a B2B and a B2C sales deck, yeah. and then also this. I will, and but I will just show you um, really quickly. Of course, oh. knowing not gonna be able to find it when I'm looking for it. Hold on, it's. I think I have a thing called decks. Um, give me a second here. I know another place to look too. Um, all right, you know how it is when you're on the spot and you can't find something. <laughs> That's okay. The, but I'll do, oh, it might be under new biz. I'm gonna do this one first. This is the B2B. Um, so um, this is um, Shopper Bridge, which is the mobile ads. So connect with customers in real time to drive them to your stores. Um, what's the problem um, or what's the situation really? Location is a strong sign of interest and intent. Uh, so where someone is may mean what they want. And we all, you know, we all have smartphones. We're spending a lot of time on that. Turn that distraction, right, into a brand engagement. And so if you're near the store, you can send people to the store. Or if you're in the store, you can, you know, promote your product. Hey, Mary. Um, oh, yeah. Is that, am I not sharing? Yeah, sorry. I can't see your screen. Okay, hold on. Um,
Okay, sorry about that because I had ended it. Um, okay, so just back here. Um, this is this is Shopper Bridge. This is the mobile technology. They have two decks because they have they sell to brands who want to sell their products in store, and they sell to retailers and QSRs who want to send people to the store. So this, let's say this is the one for uh, retailers. Of course, this one is not very active right now since no, one going, no one's going in stores. Um, but they are collecting data on all those phones for the people who were going in the stores. So as soon as we're out of uh, shelter in place restrictions, you know, they can, um, uh, restaurants and things like that can invite you back, you know, to the store. Um, so again, it talks about location in terms of what's the setup, how, how have, has the market changed? You know, where people are is generally a, a sign of what they're interested in. We've all got phones. We're spending our, our time on our phones. Instead of being distracted by this phone, you can turn that into a brand engagement because you can have an ad on the phone. Then it talks about, again, how it works, you know, kind of a simple infographic how you use it, you know, different ways. Um, it, this, they have dynamic uh, creative, so it can pull in different flavors, it can pull in different prices, it can pull in different addresses depending on where you are. Um, you, know, you can retarget people to bring them back. So it says how you use their product. And then a bunch of case studies, um, you know, uh, cost per visit, that's a big metric, um, you know, in this kind of advertising. Um, ROAS is return on ad spend, you know, so those are really strong car dealers getting you to, to visit the store. Um, they have a, th this deck doesn't have as many examples as the others. They show you, uh, you know, one of the things in my outline was how does it work? What do you get? You know, this is an example of a plan and a little bit of a summary of their difference um, and, and some of their customers, you know, the proof of concept, right? And of course, contact information, how to get started. So it's a little bit longer than the, the 10 page example, but show, well, it's only 12 pages, shows you, um, you know, has all the things in the, in the checkbox. And then um, I was gonna show you the, the B2C or the consumer product one. And now I remembered where, um, Deck examples. Aha, see, I do have a deck examples. Um, ah, this is the Publix one. This is a good one. Um, the Veg Up Power Up. Um, you know, it's a B2B headline. Energize your category with our new game changers. So this is like a consumer message, but it's also a retailer message. Um, introducing veg veggie pops, you know, what's special about them. Um, you know, it's a real game changer. The protein, organic more of the good without the bad, you know, comparing to, comparison to the competition. Um, and then here's the launch plan, you know, we're gonna invest, um, Publix, if you take our product, we're gonna invest 500,000 in dedicated marketing and you're gonna make 2 million. You know, and these are the kinds of marketing activities we want you to do. So this was all stuff we mocked up. And then, um, you know, obviously this is a little bit unrealistic that there would be this much marketing, but we're just trying to show them how we could jazz up the produce section and, and what we would look like on shelf. And then, and then there's like the, you know, the technical requirements, right? You know, it, it, for CPG brand, it's the UPCs and the ingredients and the case weights and all that kind of thing and the contact. So that's an example, I think, of a really good consumer product deck for, for retail. Sometimes there's more information on the insights. Um, you had seen that, um, I think I, um, again, here's a B2B headline, the fine art of salad, your palate for organic growth. Um, I took out some of the financials in this one because I used this example, but it's like why they, they were already in the maker of oil. They realized that everybody was using oil to make dressing. Why not come out with a pre-made dressing? Um, a little bit more about what's in the product, kind of a very similar um, chart of like, you know, that they check all the boxes and their competitors don't. This is probably the consumer version of that quad chart. A little bit more about their technical differences. They don't, um, they stay emulsified, they don't separate. Um, the, and you've seen that before the insights, I just have it in that deck, don't have it in this deck. And then the, the campaign, we came up with the um, campaign of I campaign idea of take your salads from meh to magnifique. It's a French company. So it was, and they're very much about the art of food. So you kind of see the salad as art um, and then how we plan to support it. And then even like the whole seasonal marketing plan, you know, and again, a summary, why, why us? Um, 
So again, you see that same formula in there of um, the need for organic dressing and um, why, you know, why we're better than the competition, um, what we're offering you and, and why to choose us. Good question. Okay, great. Um, so there's a couple other questions. Um, one is asking how much time should be allocated to individual demand um, gen outreach, example, LinkedIn, in mail, commenting on prospect posts. Ooh, how much time? I don't know. I don't think there's a, a single answer for that, right? Um, I mean, if you're if you're selling a B two B technology, you probably have um, you need some kind of prospect list. You know, whether you're using PipeDrive or um, was it Sales SalesPipe, <laughs> Salesforce? You know, one of the CRMs or even a Google spreadsheet, right? Of who your prospects are, and um, I think that in the beginning, it doesn't, it only costs you your time, right? So you probably are spending time um, nurturing those prospects, right? Trying to get meetings with them, um, sending them something interesting that's relevant to your business, um, researching them on, um, on LinkedIn, you know, or, or seeing what the, what's important to them. Um, but you've, you've got to balance, I know it's hard, you've got to balance that with, you know, all your other responsibilities, right? And so eventually that's when you have a, a paid salesperson, right? And they're doing some of that. Um, I, don't, I don't think that's one, I don't think there's one answer for that. You know, as you get more sales, you should analyze the, uh, the, um, the sales, um, what is it called? The sales cycle, I guess. You know, when was the first contact and, and when was the, and when did it close, right? And how many touch points along the way were there? And then you'll have an idea of how many resources to allocate, how, many, how much resources to allocate to future sales. Um, but generally, think of, think of marketing as one to many and sales as one to one. And um, think about, put a little bit more effort into good content creation because that is your one to many. And then as the responses come in, then you do the one to one, which is like, shorter and more targeted, um, you know, trying to get live conversations versus the one to many is going to be more, you know, digital content, things like that. Hopefully that's helpful. Yeah, that, that's helpful. I think so. Um, yeah, I totally agree with you. I don't think there's like an, a specific uh, n number that you could put on the amount of time that is allocated to that outreach. But I, I think you have to be, you almost have to, val uh, you almost have to do speed versus, um, speed and quality versus quantity in a way on, on, on your prospects. So try to get back to people quickly, even if it's a, a quick acknowledgement and, and then try to set up a meeting. Because I think the trap, and I've done this myself, it's like, oh, I owe someone something, but I haven't done it yet. And then I just kind of like put it off and then it's almost like too much time goes by, right? Yeah. So if someone reaches out to you, you know, try to respond 24, 48 hours, right? While it's hot, even if you can't, it, it, I think it's better to respond quickly than perfectly, right? If they're asking for something that you know is gonna take you more time, respond anyway, give them a little bit of information. It's like, hey, that's a great idea. I think we could, you know, do that within two weeks. Um, let me get back to you, you know, or, or can we talk about it X date, something like that. Great. Okay. So the next question says, um, do you think partnerships with NGOs are worth doing? Oh gosh, that's another, it depends question. I hate that. It's, it's like, it's depend, it depends. That's always like a, a typical consultant answer. Um, so I, there's a, um, a framework I learned for promotion strategy a long time ago that I always use, which is there's kind of four, kind of four key ways to promote a product. Um, obviously there's awareness, but in terms of promotion, getting people to act now, there is price discount, you know, some kind of special like free shipping, you know, that kind of thing or um, quarter deal. There is um, benefit experience or sample. It could be a, a pilot or a trial. You know, software does this all the time, 30 months free. Um, there's added value, uh, you know, buy this and get, and get something else. And then there's what's called borrowed equity. Um, which is kind of leveraging something else that's well known. So if a uh, if an NGO is if by associated with by associating with an NGO you're going to get more exposure 
or if you are donating proceeds to them or something like that, and people are going to more likely choose your brand over a similar brand that doesn't have that, I think, I think it can be worth it. It's just, you've got to take the time to develop the partnership and make sure it's a win-win. Um, but the, um, you know, just, you need to think about it in terms of your, um, who your customer is and what's going to be most motivating to them. And it might even be something that you want to, uh, you know, get some feedback on, right? Whether that's qualitative by calling some potential customers or doing some kind of survey to see what's important to them. Cause marketing and, and things that are good for the planet or good for others is a, is a pretty hot area of marketing right now. And all things being equal, consumers look for that. Great, thank you, Mary. Um, so we also, we have another question from Harbing. Um, Harbing, I think I might just allow you to talk for this um, question so you can ask it directly to Mary. So I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you. Oh, okay. This is Harbing, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, my quick question is um, in an elevator pitch, uh, typically, it's very short, but for some uh, technology startups like us, uh, our our business to to business, uh, the technology is quite complicated, and business model might be also uh, complicated. In that case, should we sacrifice a little bit on the accuracy for the simplicity? Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say. F uh sacrifice accuracy, but I would definitely go for simplicity. Um, yeah. Can you make your grandmother understand it? You know, can you, can you find an analogy of, of what your product is like to something that's relatable and start with that so people get it and then you go into the detail. Like, um, you know, they talk about when, you're, when a child asks a question, always yeah. just give them a little bit of information at a time versus giving them the super technical answer. So, um, you know, start, start simple and, and go bigger and know in a, you know, a three minute pitch in a, in a competition, you're not going to be able to get into all the technical details and you probably don't need to for that audience, right? You can, you can yeah. be, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't sacrifice accuracy. I would um, just aim for simplicity and that's where um, analogies to other products and infographics and things like that can really help. Okay. Okay. I think I got it. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, Harving. Um, so it looks like those were all the questions that we got. Um, so thank you, Mary, so much. I know you're going to be sending us a few things um, to follow up with the startups. Oh, actually, it looks like we do have one more question. Um, let me see. Acor is a chemical company with over 700 patent patented chemical agents, but investors want to see sales of products containing our chemicals. This is leading us into industrial consumer and pharma verticals. Um, Marilyn, is there, um, is there a question there? Um, let me see. I can probably allow her to talk. Let me see. Marilyn. A lot of talk. Okay, Marilyn, you can unmute yourself and, and expand on your question if you'd like. I don't have time to finish typing. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. So, yeah, this, is, this has created a nightmare for us yeah. because selling chemicals is a very low margin business in general, even though they're novel and unique and everything else. So the investors are not familiar with chemical companies but they are familiar with water treatment companies or surface cleaning companies or industrial process enhancers. So that has led us for the last four years down these, the pathway of developing end use products. We now have uh, four that are available for immediate sale, but they're all in different verticals. Mm. It's just exhausting us. Yeah. We've been through boot camps where the mentors argue. Some say, just be a chemical company and let them figure it out. Others say, no, no, choose one vertical and go with it. Even, even in plug and play, we're talking to, to potential partners in several different verticals. It's crazy. 
Yeah. It's hard to build a brand in multiple verticals, right? Because, um, but uh, um, there's the old adage, if you want to sell um, pearls, you need to make a pearl necklace, right? Um, so you need to show people what you can use your products for. So that's probably why you came up with the end use products. Um, or maybe I'm getting that wrong. Maybe it says if you wanted to sell oysters, you have to make a pearl necklace. But the idea is you have to make the end product. Um, I feel like if um, I feel like since you you might be better off just picking one vertical to try to sell your product to get that recognition and the proof of concept, you know, to talk about how it works for other products. Because um, you're right, the B, even though the the B2B is lower margin, it could be a lot higher dollar, it could be higher profitability because you don't have, it's, you're not, you don't have to do as much marketing there. You don't have to build a brand, right? You just have to find the right customer who sees how that's gonna benefit their product. Um, unless you're a branded ingredient. Um, so, you know, what, what is, which is the vertical that to, to start with, right? That has, you know, that you feel like has the easiest, the cheapest way to gain trial. Maybe they're, they're lower um, out of pocket costs, or maybe, you know, given what's just happened, you know, more, there's gonna be more demand. Is it something that people are now gonna be doing at home more? Um, you know, can you, um, or maybe it's a less competitive market. Um, so maybe, maybe, uh, COVID-19 is, is giving you, you know, is, is making it clear as much as the vertical to invest in. Right. Yeah. We're, we're in the throes of this identity crisis. Yeah. It's maybe hard. I'll contact you separately. Yeah. I, I could try to, uh, brainstorm with you a little bit offline. Yeah. You. I'll go ahead and, and make an introduction for that or set up an office hour. I, I would love to make that. Connection. So th thank you so much, Marilyn, for speaking oh, up. Thank you for taking the question yeah of course okay well great well thank you so much i know we went over a little bit on time so i really appreciate your time today mary um if anybody has any questions or wants to follow up with mary please feel free to send me an email um uh, before you all sign off i'm just going to put my email in the chat um but it is just alexandra at pnptc.com um, if you would like to follow up with Mary or get any of these materials, um, I'm happy to share those with you. Uh, with that being said, thank you again, Mary, so much, and I hope you all have a great day. All right. Bye, everybody. Take care.